welcome to our final why behind the what today we will be discussing connection so what is something that you do from day to day to take care of yourself a lot of times our first thought goes to our nutrition or our physical activity or exercise but something that kind of falls through the cracks or that we don't necessarily think of is our social connections um, and social connections are very important. Research actually shows that loneliness is on the rise and a lack of human connection can be super harmful to your health. So it's important that we focus on it. But one of the things that kind of gets in the way is that our lives are busy. We're trying to juggle work, family, home, relationships, all sorts of things, our hobbies. like. We're juggling it all and because of that, we usually kind of let our self-care, our connections kind of fall by the wayside. Um, and like I said, connecting with others is so important that we need to put it kind of at the forefront and make it a priority. So I'm going to read a quote from Brene Brown that I think really helps um, kind of show the importance of connection. So she was originally a professor at the University of Houston and has done a, a ton of different work on um, social connection, vulnerability. Um, so you may be familiar with her name, but in an interview, she said, a deep sense of love and belonging is an ir irresistible need of all people. We are biologically, cognitively, physically, and spiritually wired to love, to be loved, and to belong. When those needs are not met, we don't function as we're meant to. We break, we fall apart, we numb, we ache, we hurt others, we get sick. We are profoundly social creatures. So we may think we want the money, the power, fame, beauty, a new car, but at the root of most of these desires is the need to belong, the need to be accepted, to connect with others, and to again, be loved. Now, we pride ourselves on independence, on pulling ourselves up by our own bootstraps, having a successful career, and above all, not depending on anyone. But as Brene Brown and many other psychologists have repeatedly stressed, the truth of the matter is that a sense of social connection is one of our fundamental human needs. So, so important for us to be connecting, to be having those relationships, and to be keeping them going, keeping them strong. So some of the different things that we can benefit from if we have connections is social connection can actually help lower anxiety and depression and lead to more happiness. So having connections with those around us can lower the bad and bring out more of the good. It can help us regulate our emotions. So Having connections is a way to express the different emotions and with that it can lead to having higher self-esteem or more empathy and understanding um, in that aspect. Also, having more social connections can actually improve our immune system. So, like I mentioned before, research has shown that loneliness is on the rise and especially after this weird year and a half that we've had, it's 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 elevated and loneliness is associated with having higher blood pressure, having obesity, having an increased risk for diseases. So this is why social connection is so important because by neglecting our need to connect, we're actually putting our health at risk. So don't neglect that need, okay? So moving on, we're gonna go through some tips um, for connecting. So first things first, again, with a reminder, it's been a weird year. So some of these you're gonna be like, I couldn't do that for the last year. I was self-quarantining or whatever. But these are tips to help with connecting. And the first one is smile. So it's a great first step to kind of open up to someone, let them in, let them know you're welcoming and you're willing to make that connection. Or if you are seeing people you already have a relationship built with, a smile is usually contagious. So if you're smiling, they're smiling, we're raising that connection and we're raising that happiness factor. 
Another tip is to invite conversation. So be willing to open up about yourself and then in turn asking whoever you're connecting with to open up about themselves. So kind of like a tit for a tat, I'll share about me and then I'll invite you to share about you. Another really easy way to um, connect is by offering a compliment or an affirmation. So it's kind of a low effort thing to do, but it's super effective in recognizing someone. And again, sharing that connection, a simple compliment or an affirmation can do that. Another big part of connecting is to pay attention. So if you're with someone one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of times distractions happen easily, especially with our phones and technology. So focus on being in that moment, being present with who you're connecting with, pay attention, listen to what they're saying and be able to offer feedback, advice, or ask engaging questions in response to your discussion. Another important tip is to set expectations. So don't be afraid to share your needs or your expectations um, to help that relationship grow. So sometimes that's where things can get a little tense is when we're not sharing you know, I need time to connect with you and I need it to be away from others. I need technology to be put away, all that kind of stuff. Set those expectations and voice them. And then the last and final tip is just to be yourself. I feel like it's something that we learn from a young age, like don't be afraid to be you, but it's something that we easily kind of put aside, especially if we're people pleasers or we're trying to, you know, fit in and do what everyone else is doing. But the main thing to have connections is to be you, yet let your unique light shine and others will recognize it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something and I hope you are willing to go out and make those connections with others. Thanks guys.